Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and host of the weekly online talk show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm answering questions from insurancelibrary.com and today's question is, is Index Universal Life a good investment? Well, one good thing about this is Index Universal Life will let you participate in indexes. It could be foreign, it could be domestic. And the good thing about that is you get some of the market potential without any of the downside risk. Keep in mind though, even though there's no downside risk in this product, you still have policy expenses to pay based on the current price tag that the carrier is charging in the policy, as well as it has contractual guarantees. You have to look at both of those to see if that's a good deal or not. But I like, you know, I like indexing because you get market participation without the downside risk. You just have to remember that I'm paying for expense loads and that money could come out tax-free depending upon how you set it up. I'm answering questions from insurancelibrary.com and today's question, is a deferred income annuity a good idea? Well, a lot of people like to buy and shop for blocks of income. You can actually go out and figure out what kind of income you're gonna to need to subsidize your basic domestic expenses during retirement. A deferred income annuity will be able to give you a block of income. It could be for a time certain, it could be for the rest of your life. It depends upon your timeline and what you're looking for. But you'll be surprised that most of the people that buy deferred income annuities also buy an inflation rider, a cost of living rider to it, so that every year there's an adjustment made for your income, the block of income that you purchase, plus it goes up, let's say 3% every year annually. And if you buy a lifetime DIA, that premium will go up every year all the way out until the last day that you live. Is a single premium annuity a good investment? Well, remember, generally these are interest driven products and single premium annuity annuities could be a period certain it could be 10 years certain it could be 20 years certain or one of the most popular out there right now is you're actually purchasing a lifetime of income with a single premium immediate annuity and if it's non-qualified the money that you originally put into it called basis comes out blended with the gain on this so there's a little bit of a tax advantage there and remember, you can't outlive this. So if you become the Guinness Book of World Records or you're one of Willard Scott's people that turn 100 every day, you're gonna get that payment and it's there for the rest of your life. So a lot of people like single premium immediate annuities to be the underpinning or their foundation of their retirement. Is a variable annuity a good investment? Well, remember, this is a market-driven product. So the first thing you need to do is take a risk tolerance test. After you take the test and you turn out to be a conservative or even a conservative moderate, kind of an investor, you may not want to do this product. It has market risk, but it also has market potential. They have expense loads that you need to look at and see if that fees, the fees that are inside those contracts are worth doing. Remember, a variable annuity is going to be able to accumulate tax deferred and there could be income riders on, which probably will cost you a little bit to play. There will be income riders that will gen could generate guaranteed income for life, depending upon if you elect to pay for it or not. Again, remember, this is a long haul instrument. It has market risk. You could lose your money. Remember to always take the risk tolerance test for a product like this before purchasing. Is an annuity guaranteed withdrawal benefit a good idea? Well, remember, I always say, what's the price tag? Do you have to pay for that GLWB rider? If you do, then I have to look at it and is it paying for the cash account or is it paying for the phantom account that they're basing their income on? I need to look and price that because that could be anywhere between 100 to 125 basis points. So it's really, it could be expensive, but you have to say yes, but what am I getting in return? Remember, the older you are when you take constructive receipt, the higher the interest. But your timeline, if it's shorter, you may just be getting your principal back. You need to look at this really hard. It could be a great play if it's very inexpensive and if it's priced at the cash account and not at the phantom account. If you have any questions, just submit them to www.insurancelibrary.com. It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. And keeping more of your money is even harder these days with high taxes, fund expenses, and fees for financial advice. And when you consider the uncertainty of the market and the rising cost of living, the purchasing power of your dollar is constantly at risk. But a tax-deferred annuity with an inflation rider can be the most cost-effective way to generate increasing annual income without market volatility. For more information on how annuities may work for you, just email me at steve at thenameofthegame.tv and ask for our free annuity information. I'm answering questions from insurancelibrary.com and the famous question that we get all the time is, is the Roth IRA better than a life insurance policy? Well, it's kind of tales of two cities. Many times if I want to be into different funds, I can get both funds inside a life insurance contract or a Roth. But 
Roth has limitations to it as far as how much I can put into it. So some people will buy a Roth, and I think it's a good idea, especially when you're looking at placing basic interest rate or an annuity into it or mutual funds. It just depends upon what you're using it for. But life insurance, you can they don't have the same limitations. And remember, it has a death benefit to it. So when you're looking at it, it has to both of them have to be long haul in their thinking. They both accumulate tax deferred, and when the money comes out, if set up correctly, it should come out tax-free. It's a great idea, both of them, as a supplementary retirement income play when you're thinking about your retirement portfolio. Is a non-qualified plan better than a qualified plan? Well, there's two issues why you should be using a qualified plan, like an example, 401k. You're in a high tax bracket or your employer actually is matching your contribution in some way, which I think is a great way to go. So if I have a high tax bracket and my employer is doing a match and I have both of those, I think that's a really good play. Qualified plans are the way to go. I get the deduction and my employer is actually contributing. But if I don't have either one of those two, then really the deduction does me no good. I like the life insurance idea because I don't have the same ERISA issues like 59 and a half and I have a penalty if I took out my money. So I like the life insurance side of that issue from a non-qualified point of view because it accumulates tax deferred and if it's set up correctly, it could come out tax free. So how does an index insurance product work? Well, let's say you wanted to buy a house and you weren't really sure if you wanted to buy it. So you rented the home and you gave them a $5,000 check on the side to give you the right to buy it. At the end of the year, you saw the neighborhood decline or you didn't like the neighborhood. You could exercise your right to move out. You'd lose your 5,000, but that would be it. If you like the house and it appreciated in value, then your $5,000 was a good investment and you went ahead and you purchased the home. So depending upon the value, this works the similarly in index products. In index insurance products, you have two ways to go. You can use a indexed annuity or you could use an index life insurance contract. Both of these work similarly to the posture I've given you as a basic example of buying and renting a home. Is giving my life insurance policy to a charity a good idea? Well, first of all, do you have a charity that qualifies as a nonprofit under the IRS rules? Second of all, is this a charity that you want to see go into perpetuity? And third of all, if your, your contract is existing and you really don't need it anymore, you don't need it for yourself, you don't need it for your beneficiaries, maybe your children or grandchildren, you could gift your policy to the charity. Some people will also write a policy on themselves from day one and have the charity own it. It really depends upon what you're trying to get done. But if you're trying to see your organization go into perpetuity and you no longer need an existing contract, this is a really good option for you to look at. A charity, you can gift your life insurance to the charity of your choice and just make sure that it's IRS approved. Is there a limit on how much life insurance I can purchase? Well, let's say I'm going to purchase it on myself and I need to be able to use financial justification. Financial justification simply means that I have to be able to verify and validate the reason I have coverage. And if I have huge income and I have a massive amount of assets and I'm looking at a future date on which I think I will die based on my life expectancy, then I can go all the way up to those limits, but I'm gonna hit, sooner or later I'm gonna hit a limit because I will not be able to justify it. So. Can you buy it on as much as you want? The answer is no. You have to always base your thinking on what do I need to cover all my liabilities, my taxes and transfer issues at death, and when do I think I'm going to die? Those are the numbers I'm looking for at whatever inflation rate of return that I use as my reference point. Well, that's our show for today. Keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas you've heard on our show, always consult your tax advisor or your legal counsel. And as the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, Save all you can, give all you can. I'm Steve Savant. See you next week.